Hi everybody, I am Sri Ranjan. Today, I am going to create a new project with this concept, crude operations. Okay, so what does it mean? Crude stands for creating a record, read. R stands for read, U stands for update, D stands for delete. Okay, so crude. Simply we are calling it as crude operations, CRUD operations. Okay. So creating a new record, reading that particular record, updating that record and deleting that record. Okay. So this concept I'm going to teach you in Python programming language. We are going to create a project in Python from scratch. I'm going to show you. Okay. So everything I will show you. So we are going to see this project. I'm going to show you. So we are using this particular concept, student management system. With this concept, student management system. Okay. So we are going to create, read, update, delete operations. We are going to do it on this particular project. So the things needed for this particular project are, so we are going to use Django 4. I mean to say Django fourth version. Okay. So more than four, it can be latest version. Also you can use and HTML fifth version, CSS third version and bootstrap fifth version and boot boots watch also theme. We are going to use one theme that is from the boots watch. Okay. So Django four, HTML five, CSS three, bootstrap five and boots watch theme. We are going to implement on this particular project. Okay. So I'm going to start. So before we start, so what are the things we need? So Django, as we discussed earlier, so this is the Django. Okay. So what is Django? Django is a web framework. You can see the definition here. Django is a high level Python web framework that encourages rapid development. Okay. So we can do the projects on this Django. Uh, high level web framework using this Django is a high level web framework in Python only in Python. Okay, so it encourages rapid development and clean and pragmatic design. Okay, we can do a lot of projects using this. So why we want to use this Django? Django makes it easier to build better web applications more quickly and with less code. So we can do it. So 80% of the uh, Web development work is taken place with this Django. So only 20% we need to do. The main part of the application app we are going to develop using the Django. 80% it will make it, uh, I mean, it will do by itself. Okay. We don't have much burden. 100% we no need to do. 80% it will be done by the Django. Okay. So, so this is the MVT diagram we are going to use in the Django. So this is the Django server. So user is nothing but the developer. And we are going to see all these things. Okay. While developing the project, we are going to see all these things. And it invokes the, it goes to the URL from there. It goes to the, so this is the business logic. So we are having three different steps, isn't it? Front end, business logic and back end. Use is the business logic. Model is the back end database. And templates are front end. In the template folder, we're having all the HTML files, views will be having the functions and model will be having the tables, okay? And uh, that is the important thing. Now, what are the things we need? What are the software requirements for this particular project? So you can see this. So I'm going to show you the project, okay? Project, how it works, I'm going to show you. And afterwards, we can install this project. I will show you from the scratch, okay? How to install this pro all the softwares, for this particular project, I'm going to show you. Okay. And we are going to create a project from the scratch, from the beginning. Okay. So everything we are going to create from the beginning. Okay. So that is the advantage. So we are using this Django framework. So you can see this framework. It is a powerful framework. So security is also very good for this particular Django. Okay. So, and we are going to use this technology MVT based to control flow. We are calling it as a MVT based. So while creating this project, we are going to use this particular technology 
and these are the softwares we need python 3.12.0 pycharm latest version you can use or now the latest version is 2023 2.3 okay so i'm going to install this pycharm installation part also i'm going to show you and uh, database is sqlite 3 database latest version we can install okay so i'm going to install all these softwares before i start this so i'm going to show you front end we are going to use this django 4 html5 css3 bootstrap 5 and boots watch theme this is the theme okay so all these things we are going to use in our project okay so now i'm going to show you how to install the softwares before that i'm going to execute the project okay so how will be the output okay so this is the project actually sms student management system i'm going to open this right click on this open with the pycharm so softwares i'm already having existing in my laptop okay so I'm going to open this particular project. Okay, one minute. Okay, I'm using the Windows 11. You can use Windows 10. If you are using Windows 10 directly, you will be getting this if you right click on this. So you'll be getting this option. Open folder as PyCharm Community Edition project. Okay, I'm going to open the project in this particular folder. PyCharm Community Edition. So I'm going to uninstall all the softwares and I'm going to show you again. Okay, don't worry. So I'm going to show how to install these softwares too. So Python 3.11.0, PyCharm installation and SQLite 3 database installation also I'm going to show you. So first I'm going to show you how it works, how the project works. And afterwards I'm going to uninstall all the softwares and the installation part also I will show you. And from the scratch, from the beginning, I'm going to show you everything. So how to create the project, front end, business logic and back end. Okay, so backend is database, frontend is HTML files, designing. Okay, so and business logic is the logic, so scripting of the project. So uh, by default, if I open this project, it will be in this, uh, so it may be like this. Okay, maybe shown like this. So don't worry, no need to worry. So it may be like this. So when I open the project, it may be empty like this. So it may be like this. Okay, don't worry. No need to worry. Just we need to click on this. It is in the sleeping mode, actually sleeping mode. So just click on this folder. It will show the project. Okay. And also this is the terminal at the bottom. You can, you need to open the terminal to run the project. Entire project, we need to open the terminal. Just click on this terminal. It will open like this. Okay. So it may be in the sleeping mode. So we are going to invoke this. Okay. So PyCharm is the user friendly. So that is the reason we are using PyCharm. Okay. Just click on this. It will open like this project. Okay. And use the terminal. So here we are going to create. Okay. You can see the uh, Python version at the bottom. Python 3.12 I am going to use. Okay. So here I am going to just type DIR. DIR stands for directory. So which folder we are in. Okay. So then. So we need to go inside that particular folder. CD student student management hyphen system just click on this and click on directory so you need to you need to able to see this particular manage.py okay so you you need to able to see that particular manage.py so you can see here 
okay from here i need to type this particular command so i'm going to run this project with this command okay so why i am using this command i'm going to explain so while explaining the project, while creating the project, we are going to see all of them. So just click on that particular command, python manage.py run server, you will be getting this link like this. This is called localhost. So 127.0.0.1 is the localhost, okay? And 8000 is the port number. If I click on this particular link, it is opened in the default browser. What is your default browser? It opens in that particular default browser. So uh, I'm going to show you that. So you can see here. So the mine is Chrome is my default browser. Okay, you can see here, I'm going to open this. Just click on this link. It opens in the default browser in a new tab. Okay, so it opens in the new tab. It opens in the new tab. So this is the project actually crude operations. So as I said earlier, so these operations we are going to see. Crude operations. Crude stands for C for create, creating the new record. R stands for read. U stands for update. D stands for delete. So these are the four operations we are going to see one by one. Okay. So I'm going to show you the first one, adding student, add student. Student management system here, you can find the student role number or student number. You can say first name, last name, email ID, field of study, GPA and actions so in the actions you can able to see that if i click on this particular thing you can able to see the student details in this particular thing okay so we designed the code in that way okay just click on close so this is the edit button and this is the delete button so crude operations in that we are going to see first we are going to create a one student name add student so just click on the add student and give the name i mean number First, you need to give the number for this particular student. So, Royce D. Okay. So, so this is the email ID I am going to give. So, field of study. You can give anything. So, these are the previous one. So, I am going to directly select or I can type or I can direct previously selected. Okay. You can get that. So, GPA. Okay, so GPA, I'm going to give, it is maximum. So five, five, zero to five. So I'm going to give it 4.9 GPA, okay, add. So if I click on add, what will happen? Automatically create a record. So record is created, go to home page. So just click on home page, you can able to see this. Okay, this is added. So that is creator. First one is done, creator, okay. Next, this is the reading. So all students, if I click on all students, you can able to see the list of the students present in the database. So this is the database. In the database, how many students are there? You can see. And just click on the actions. You can able to see the student name and edit. So I'm going to click on edit. Okay. So just click on edit. So you can edit anything. So I want to just edit the email ID. So just David R. I'm putting that email ID I edit, I'm editing update. Just click on update. You can see that and go to the home page. You can able to see that updation. Okay, email ID is edited. And delete. If I click on delete also, it will be removed from the database permanently. Okay. So it is asking, are you sure you want to delete this record? Delete. Okay. So that record will be deleted permanently. Okay. So these are the operations. We we done all these things, creating the new record reading the record, updating the record, deleting the record. All these things we done just now. I showed you in this particular student management system. So this project from scratch, I'm going to show you. I mean to say we'll be creating all the front end files. Okay. So uh, database and also uh, everything I'm going to show you. Okay. So I'm going to create a new file. So add student. I'm going to create another file. so already existing okay so previously done it is already showing 
So computer science, I'm going to select. It is not drop, drop down actually. So already previously I have done this. Okay. So 4.8 GP, I'm going to give her add. So you can see this. Go to the home page. The new student added successfully. Go to the home page. Been able to see that. Okay. I'm going to show this particular thing in the database also. So see here. So this is the thing. Okay. So I'm going to show this particular thing in the database. So DB Escalate 3 is the database. I'm going to open this. Right click on this database. Okay. Open path reference. Select absolute path and go to the DB Escalate 3. Here uh, you can see on my uh, taskbar DB browser. Just I installed that. So click on that. It will open like this. So uh, you need to click on the open database and paste the path and click on open. We already copied that particular path, isn't it? So database structure, you can see that. But now we need to see the browse data at the top. Okay. Click on browse data. There you can find the tables. So tables are drop down. When you drop down, click on that particular drop down symbol. You can able to see the tables. So we got the table students is the name of the app student is the okay table name table name is student students is the app name okay just click on the table so student is the table name students is the app name first we will be getting the app name along the app name we will be getting the table name so here you can find all the details okay so it is the table so table it is created you can see here so id numbers you can able to see here student name role number Okay, role number, student first name and last name, email ID you can able to see, field of study you can see, and GPA you can see. Okay, so GPA will be around uh, uh, 5. Okay, so maximum 0 to 5 GPA will be giving. Okay, uh, so this is the one. Okay, you can see here database, this is the back end. Uh, same thing you can able to see in the front end also. This is the front end. Okay. So same tables you can able to see in the front end. So this is the project actually. We are going to create this project from the scratch. Okay. I'm going to uninstall all the softwares. And I'm again, I'm going to show you installing the softwares. Okay. So get ready with this. So I'm going to install 3.12.0. PyCharm also. SQLite 3 database also. I'm going to show you how to install them. Okay. So before we do that, we need to uninstall that. Isn't it? Okay, so DB Escalate 3, I'm going to uninstall and PyCharm also, I'm going to uninstall and show you how to install. After that, we'll start the project, okay? So I'm going to remove from my taskbar. Okay, so from control panel, I'm going to uninstall all the three softwares. Why? Because I will show you how to install also. From installation part also, I'm going to show you everything. Okay, so you no need to take anybody's help. You can do it your project by yourself by seeing this. Okay, so you no need of asking anybody. Okay, just I'm going to uninstall this Python 3.12.0 64-bit uninstall this. And after that, I'm going to uninstall the DBS Clite 3 browser database. I don't want to pause the video. Why? Because you need to know completely. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to skip anything. It won't take much time. So, three softwares I'm going to uninstall at a time. Okay, so that we can install the three softwares at one time. So meanwhile, uh, yeah, so I'm going to open the uh, python.org website. From there, you can get the software.
python.org just go here python just click on python.org it comes like this so hover your mouse on downloads you can see the latest software so while you are watching this video what is the latest thing you can download okay no need of going for other things if you want to go for other things go to all releases click on all releases okay so it will open like this you can able to see the different uh, versions middle number you need to consider okay, i'm going to zoom in so middle number we need to consider okay so 3.12.0 okay so this is the latest version we downloaded okay python 3.12.0 we are going to download now okay we used in our in our project okay so i'm going to download this okay just click on this so go to go here and download from here okay windows installer amr 64 bit but we can do it from here itself okay why because we are having the latest version isn't it downloads go and click on this 3.12.0 okay so i'm going to put that particular download on the desktop okay so python is finished python installation is finished so we will see uninstallation also successfully done okay next we are going to uninstall the db sqlite 3 database okay uninstall this and this thing also we are going to install so it is a small software it won't take much time it is also successfully uninstalled so first i am downloading these softwares after that yeah pycham also i am going i am going to uninstall three softwares okay you can see here now these three softwares so python 3.12.0 we downloaded we downloaded okay i'm going to install that particular 3.12.0 installation part i'm going to show you yeah so how to install python 3.12.0 double click on this icon we we downloaded this from the website double click on the icon just add so you need to by default it won't be enabled add python.exe to the path just click on this okay customize installation everything will be enabled just no need of this just i am going to show you that okay just by default it won't be add python.exe to the path you need to enable this why because it won't work if you don't enable that python won't work on all the places you need to every time go to the python.exe file there only you can install okay just click on install now the thing is 64 bit is compulsory must and should you need to have okay so i'm going to show you that 64 bit uh, you can check like this go to the pc this pc right click on the this pc show more options you can see the uh, this pc right click on the this pc show more options you can able to see the configuration of your laptop or pc okay So, uh, yeah, this PC properties, just click on properties, not show, not uh, more options, sorry. You can see here. So if your laptop is 32 bit here, you can find 32 bit, uh, it must be 64 bit. Uh. If that is 32 bit, it won't work. This uh, this interpreter 3.12, it won't work. So 8 GB is my RAM. Okay, you can have 2 GB also. 2 GB, 4 GB also, it is uh, supportable. Okay, so mine is 8 GB. It will be a little bit faster. So uh, better choose for uh, 8 GB. So if you are buying, if you want to buy a new laptop, yeah. Okay, I'm going to install this particular 3.12.0. Just click on install. It will install. Okay, next, see here. Yeah, it is also done. PyCharm is also uninstalled.
So you can have multiple interpreters in your laptop, no problem. So I mean to say, here you can see, I am going to show you that 3.7 is there, 8 is there, 9 is there, 10 is there, 11 is there, 12 is there. 12 just now we installed, isn't it? So we can have multiple interpreters. Multiple interpreters we can use for multiple projects. It is taking a little bit time. Depending upon your net speed, it works. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm going to show you Python is finished, okay? So I'm going to close this particular tab, DB Escalate 3. So go to search, Google search, DB Escalate 3. You just uh, search with this particular keyword, DB Escalate 3. Okay, it comes like this. So you need to go to the first DB browser for Escalate 3, Escalate, okay? So this is the Escalate browser.org website. You, you will be finding this. I'm going to zoom in, okay? I will show you. So just you will find like this. Okay, just click on this particular link. So DB browser for Escalate, Escalate 3. Okay, so this is the default database for Django. Default database. So this thing, same project, we can do it using the MySQL also. Real-time projects we'll be doing with the real-time projects MySQL database. So next series, I'm going to show you with MySQL database. Okay, the same thing if you want or other concept we can use using the MySQL database. So just click on download, just click on download. So uh, you will be finding 32 bit and 64 bit, just click on 64 bit. Okay, if your laptop is 32 or PC is 32 bit, you click on this 32 bit. Otherwise go to 64 bit standard installer for 64 bit. Okay, I'm going to download this on my desktop. Close this, okay. So, uh, so, yeah, setup was successful. Okay, this is the Python 3.12.0. Setup was successful. Close this. Okay, we completed this. So, completed installation. So, I'm going to mark here. Completed installation. Okay, so I showed you how to install this particular thing. Okay, so I'm going to mark this. Okay, next one. So DB Escalate 3 also software, it is done. Okay, I'm going to install this, download it. Double click on this icon. It comes like this. Click on next. You need to select this and click on next. And you need to select the desktop and program menu. Next and next and install. That's it. Okay, so these are the steps. This is how you need to install this particular software. Click on yes, it is asking for the permission. Click on S, it will be installed. Okay. So I am putting those softwares on my taskbar. So I don't put here. Uh, so I'm putting this icon on my taskbar. Show more options. So pin to taskbar. So it will be easy for me. So I'm putting on my taskbar. You can able to see here. Okay. I don't put here. Okay, as well as I'm putting the uh, Python 3.12 also, I'm putting on my taskbar. Here you can see. Uh, so ideally, I'm going to put on my, on my taskbar. Okay, you can see here. So these two softwares is available on my taskbar. Just click on this. So next one, next installation. What is that? So this thing also completed. So this thing also completed. Okay, so now we are going to install the PyCharm. So it will take little time. Okay, so it is a huge software. It contains 413 MB. Okay, so how to do that? So just go to the web, uh, Google from here, PyCharm. Just type PyCharm. Okay, so just click on PyCharm. 
So you will be getting like this JetBrains company. So it is, uh, PyCharm is not the company. JetBrains is the company which will be working on IDLEs. So PyCharm. So JetBrains company got very good name with this famous PyCharm user-friendly developing tool. PyCharm only for Python. Okay. Just click on this PyCharm. It comes like this. You can able to see here. So PyCharm is open like this. The Python ideally for professional developers. Just click on download. Click on download. So don't go for professional. It is a paid version. After 30 days, your credit card from your credit card. So while uh, while downloading uh, while downloading this also, it will ask for the credit card to download. Uh, after uh, after 30 days, automatically $69 will be debited. So these are the system requirements you can see here. So these system requirements must satisfy. Okay. So these are the system requirements you can able to see here. So these are the compulsory system requirements it must satisfy. It won't uh, uh, allow if these are not met at the requirements. Okay. So 64 bit is must and should Windows 10 and uh, more than that Windows 11 is also okay. Windows 10 and 11 will work. Server is also okay. It will run on the server 2019 and later. 2GB RAM is must and should uh, minimum. And 8GB is, if 8GB is having the RAM, that will be okay. So it will be very fast. Even 4GB also work. Okay. So if that is 8GB, the project will be working very fast. Okay. It won't lag. Okay. So 3.5GB hard disk, it will take SSD RAM is required. Okay. So that is very fast. It will be very fast. Otherwise, we can see some lag. 3.5GB hard disk, it is separated. PyCharm projects, it will create the folder. For that purpose, it will create. So this is the resolution, minimum resolution. Okay. So these four points must satisfy. Okay. So this is not the one. We need to install the community version at the top, at the below. So this is the one, PyCharm community version. We are having different things, Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. By default, it opens in the Windows. You can see here on your browser. Okay. So on URL, you can see the Windows, it will open Mac OS also, Linux is also there. So default will be the Windows. You, can, you need to install this particular download. Click on the download. Download button. So here it will show the, uh, so email ID. If you want your email ID, yeah, this is the download. I am going to download that. You can enter your email ID. Newsletters and new versions are arriving. If any new uh, versions will be coming, will be coming through your uh, to your particular email ID. Okay, whatever you will be giving here, it will uh, it will show us the information. New version arrived. If any new version or newsletters are coming, it will show. So uh, this uh, JetBrains company became very popular with this PyCharm tool. Okay, user friendly tool. So instead of Visual Code, so uh, so lot of people will be using this particular visual code. We need to install so many things, add-ons, features, but whereas in PyCharm it is, okay, it is very good. It is very good. I mean to say it is wrapped up. Everything is inside. Okay. Just we need to invoke so from the sleep. So no need of installing from the external things. Okay. Just I'm going to close this. So we finished this also. Okay. Completed. Okay. I did not complete it. Okay. Just download, we finish. I'm going to install this particular PyCharm. So, yeah, it is going to be coming. Okay, it is a huge one. You can able to see here, it is going to download. Yeah, it is finished. Now I'm going to install this, refresh. Yeah, PyCharm community, I'm going to double click on this. So Django is a very famous uh, web framework only for Python. It is a high level web framework. If you use Django, security is also very good. Okay. So that is the reason a lot of people prefer this Django along with the Django Python. Okay. Just click on S. Okay. Click on next. Click on next. Next. And you need to select all of them. Okay. So if you don't do that, some of the features will be lost. Okay, just click enable all of them, click on next and click on install. 
So your PyCharm is also installed. Okay, softwares are also the here. You can be able to see here all the softwares are here. Okay, I will put inside the drive and I will give you the softwares. No need that. You know how to install from the internet, isn't it? Now you came to know how to install them. You can do it. Okay, so DBS Clyde 3 database. Okay, this thing you can do. So DBS Clyde 3 database. Okay, latest version you can do. And PyCharm, what is the latest version on that particular thing also you can do the same thing, okay? Python is finished installation, 3.12.0, we finished, okay? PyCharm also finished, just now we are doing that in the process. DBS Clyde 3 also finished, okay? So these are the software requirements for our particular project, okay? So now we are going to create a project from the scratch, okay? So we'll be building front-end backend and business logic. So website contains three things, isn't it? We know that. Website contains three things. Three things. Okay, if you are uh, if you are able to develop the three things, what are those? You will be called as full stack developer, front end. Front end means HTML files. Okay, so business logic. Business logic means entire Pro, entire code of the source code of the particular project source code of that uh, of that particular project okay back end back end is nothing but back end is database connectivity so back end will be using dbs clyde 3 dbs clyde 3 in this project actually dbs clyde 3 and MySQL is also we can use. So next project, I'm going to show you MySQL, okay? So two things I'm going to explain, don't worry. So uh, not in one video, I can make it in parts. So this is the website contains three things. We know that three things, three different things we contains, okay? So first one is front end. Front end is HTML part. So next one is business logic. Business logic is the source code of that particular project. Whatever source code we are, whatever project we are going to create, that is the source code of that particular. Backend means database connectivity. Okay. So HTML files. So front end contains all the HTML files. We know that, isn't it? Okay, right. So source code of the particular project is business logic. Okay. And uh, backend is database connectivity. So uh, real-time projects will be using the MySQL database. Okay. So DBS Clyde 3 is the default database for the Django. So it is default database for Django. Okay. I'm going to mention here DB SQLite 3 is the default, default database for Django, Django framework. Okay, it is it is a framework actually. Django is a framework. It is a high level web framework for uh, Python. Okay, so you need to remember this. DBS Clyde 3 is the default. That is the reason we are using this. We no need to install. It is automatically connected with this particular thing. Okay, so this is the default uh, for uh, Django. Okay, so but uh, real time projects they will be using this. Uh, MySQL database, okay. So, uh, so we uh, we finish all the installations of this particular software, Python, PyCharm, and the uh, uh, SQLite three database. And DB SQLite three is also used in uh, smartphones. DB SQLite three database is also used in smartphones, smartphone applications. applications so i mean to say in android android applications android and uh, ios also ios applications also okay so it is the it is the famous okay so dbs directory not only in django i mean to say in python project it is also used in this particular thing okay so these are the things we need to remember we finish all the project i mean uh, all the software's completion so it will ask for the manual reboot later. I'm going to reboot. No need of now. Just click on finish. Okay. So these are the three different softwares. Now I'm going to put this on my 
a taskbar pin to the taskbar so you can see here so all the softwares are ready with me right now okay so i'm having uh python dbs client 3 and pycharm pycharm is the thing where we'll be writing the source code okay so these three things i'm going to put on my software's requirements okay so i'm create i'm going to create a folder i will put it inside my google drive i will show you in that so django for python django project okay so these are the software requirements. I'm going to put these software, three softwares on this particular uh, particular folder. Okay, right. Now, Now I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how to create a project. Okay. So from here onwards, so just now I saw, I showed you the project SMS, isn't it? Student management system from scratch. We are going to create. Okay. So for that, we will be creating a project. So from a command prompt, we are going to create a project from the command prompt Django project. So that Django project, we are going to import inside that particular so that Django project, we are going to import inside that particular uh, community version, PyCharm community version, okay? So it is a open source and free version. So uh, this is the procedure you need to create a Django project. First, we are going to create a Django project, CD, CD, okay? I'm having OneDrive. In my OneDrive, it is having, so, so some people don't have the OneDrive. Directly, you can type CD desktop, okay? Just try with that. If that is working, CD desktop after username, Dell is my username. After that, it will be fine. So mine in my OneDrive, in OneDrive, I'm having the desktop. So that is the reason I, I type like this, CD. CD stands for, so CD stands for change directory. Directory is nothing but folder in Windows. Okay, so that is the folder. Okay, here I'm going to create a folder mkdir first we need to create a folder make directory so directory we are going to make so that is django project so folder name is django project so i'm going to create the django project is the folder name in that i'm going to enter the, into the django project folder so here i need to install the install the virtual environment first okay So it will take time, little bit time compulsory. Uh, so we need to have the internet connection. Without that, it doesn't come. It won't work. Okay. So while creating a project first time, you need to have the internet connection. Without that, it won't work. So now you can see. So this is working. Okay. So I created a virtual environment. See, so I need to give the virtual environment name. So VAR. So demo. I'm going to give that particular name. Okay, so that is the name of the virtual demo. You can give your name also. You can give anything except those 32 keywords in Python. So just I'm going to create with the name, virtual uh, uh, environment with the name. We are going to activate that particular virtual environment in our project, okay? So it will take time. So I can show you this in the folder. Okay, you can see here Django project. Double click on this. So you can see the virtual demo. You can see the path even. Okay, just click on this. You can see the path. Okay, double click on this. So uh, here you can file files are automatically created. Lib library. So site packages is the packages where all the things will be resided. You can see here. Okay, scripts are uh, 
So these are batch files or Windows batch files or applications you can able to see in the scripts. Okay. So those things we need to do. So this is the folder we created just now on the command prompt. So now I'm going to do the, so I need to enter into the CD virtual demo. So that is, we are now in this place, particular place. So CD virtual demo, we are inside. Okay. Here we need to create the uh, Django project. Okay. So I'm going to create the Django project. Before that, we need to activate the virtual demo CD scripts. In that scripts, you will be finding that that is the folder just now I showed you. In this CD scripts, you can find the uh, activate. Activate stands for activating a virtual environment. So you can see that virtual demo is coming at the thing. If you deactivate, deactivate means it will go. It will be gone. Okay. So I need to activate this. So click on the upper area, you will get in the previous versions. You can activate that and go out of that particular CD data means that folder. You are going out of that particular folder. Here, you are going to install the Django project, Django. So first we need to install this Django. So like this pip install Django, okay? So, so just we can see that it can be installed like a package. So it is it can be installed Django as a package. You can see in the website, Django website. So D is silent, okay? Not D Django, D is silent actually. So it is not D Django, D is silent actually. Okay, so here you can see the download. These are the properties of the, okay? So Django, you can able to see the download at the download version. Click on this particular download version, download can see the latest version. So when it will be working, how many years it will work, all the versions, it will be shown in the table like this. So it is not much important. Okay, how many years it will come? What is the version now? We'll show all the things, details in this particular thing. So the thing is, so Django, we need to install, pip install Django. So this is the command we need to use. So even though equal to equal to 4.2.7 is the latest version, but don't put it also, it will install in the latest version. Okay, I'll zoom in. So this is the command we need to use, pip install Django. Okay, so Django web frame we are going to install, even though if I don't put equal to equal to 4.2.7, we'll install the latest version, okay? So what is pip? PIP stands for, it is not pipe. So pip, pip stands for, stands for Python. In Python, I'm going to show you what is the pip. Okay. So you can see that. PIP stands for, sorry, here it is not coming. So that is preferred installer program. So you need to remember this. In interview, they will ask what is PIP. So you need to explain that PIP stands for Preferred Installer Program, PIP. Okay, PIP, it is not pipe. Okay, so that is the command we need to use. So we are going to install that. So we can see that Django is also installed. Okay, you can see here Django, PIP install Django. Here you can see that command we have done. Okay, so it will come like this. So uh, so, uh, so you can see here in the green color, you can, can you able to see in the green color? So that is, uh, so in my laptop, 23.2.1 is the PIP version. Now the latest version is 23.3.1. I need to upgrade. So just click on the same command, python.exe minus M. So what is in that particular green color? I need, I, uh, you need to type like this exactly. Okay. So upgrade. So uh, that versions will be upgraded automatically. So it will show the version uh, not notice. In the notice, you can see you need to update the PIP version, okay? So this is the command you need to type automatically. Uh, the previous version will be uninstalled and the new version will be installed, okay? So successfully uninstalled the previous version 23.2.1. Now it is going to install the new version. Okay, it will take little time. Yeah, now you can see successfully installed, successfully installed 23.3.1. Now, 
we are ready to use the Django. So to create a Django project, this is the command Django hyphen admin. Okay. So Django hyphen admin. So we are going to create the Django project here in this folder, virtual demo. Here we are going to create the Django project here. Okay. So you can see the path. If you want, you can check the path. Okay. Just click on this virtual demo. We are going to create the Django project here. So what is the name of the Django project? So we selected that particular Django project. Okay. Start a project is a command. So what is that name of the Django project? Student management system, isn't it? Student management management system is the name of the project. Okay. We are going to do it on this particular thing. So this is the name of the project. And we need to enter into that particular student name, student management project and app we need to develop. Okay. So in that particular project, we need to develop the app student management. Management system. Okay. Sorry. Uh, so CD somewhere spelling mistake student management system. Okay, now here we need to create an app. Okay, so app app is just like uh, so in a project apps can be n number of apps. For example, blood bank project if I take so it contains three different apps it can be so require uh, so donor one is one app contains donor one app contains uh, receiver one app contains uh, uh, registration just registration registration anybody can do. So he can, he can become a donor or receiver depending upon the need. Okay. So those are three different apps. Okay. But project contains at least one app. It must contain at least one app. So now we are going to create an app. Okay. With the name Django hyphen admin. Okay. So name of the app is start app. Okay. That is app. So this is the command we need to do. What is that app? As we said earlier, students is the app. So in the project we have seen, isn't it? Students is the app. Student is the table name. Only student is the table name inside the app. Student is the app. Okay, just I'm going to create this. Now I'm going to run this particular project, Python, manage.py, run server. Okay, so if I click on this particular server, uh, sorry. Run server. So automatically my default in the default browser, it will open. Okay. Just click on that. So you can able to see the link. If you click on this particular control link, so it opens in the default browser. So from here onwards, we need to create the project. This is the front end. So we need to create a project from here. Okay. So this is the project. We, we just created a project. We need to develop this project. Okay. The development of this project concept is student management system. We have gone through that. Okay. So now I'm going to close this. No need of this. So now Django project. Okay. Double click on this folder. No need. Uh, we must not open this folder. Double click on this folder and double click on this also virtual demo. So we need to open this particular project. Okay. Student management system. To double click on this, you can see the same name with the folder. Student management system as well as students is the app and DB Escalate 3 is the database you can able to see. Okay, just click on this. So student management system, right click on this. Open. Show more options. Okay, click on the open folder as PyCharm Community Edition project. Okay, now the project is opened in this particular folder. Okay, PyCharm, sorry. PyCharm, we are going to open this project in the PyCharm. We just now created a project. Now we are going to develop that project in the PyCharm. Just click on OK. Do not import settings. So first time it will ask for the trust project. OK, just click on enable that trust project. Trust project, you need to click on this. OK, so now it will come like this. PyCharm will open like this. PyCharm, we just now installed PyCharm, isn't it? So that, that is the project directly open. 
So uh, before that, we need to change the settings. Okay, just click on the four lines at the top. Just click on that. Just click on the automatically at the bottom. Here you can find automatically. Just click on that particular thing. Close this. We are not selecting this Python 3.9. We are going to select the interpreter 3.12. Just click on this file. Go to the settings. There you can find the settings. We are going to change the appearance. So by default, Dracula, it is coming in this. Okay, appearance. So you can find the appearance here, dark or Dracula. You can see here Dracula. So we need to change it as IntelliJ. So if you want to work more hours, your eyes won't get damaged with this particular IntelliJ light. Okay, so it becomes like this. So you can change the font also. Use current font. Okay, so that 13 will be like this in this size. This is the size. So make it as 16. 16 means it will come in this way. Apply. So just it will be bigger. So now the project, we change the settings. Now we are going to open this. So it is in the sleeping mode. Just click on this. It opens like this. So you can see the name of the project, student management system. So you can open that files automatically created. These all files are automatically created. So while doing work on this particular files, I'm going to explain those files, uses of those files. Okay. You can see the students is the app name. In that also files are automatically created. You can see the DBS flat three and at the at the bottom here you can see the terminal okay so now the interpreter is updating it will take little time as i said earlier so background task it is going to done so it will take little time terminal is used to run the entire project and uh, python console is used to run the individual module okay so we are going to use the terminal just click on the terminal so what is the interpreter we are going to select uh, so by default, it is Python 3.9, it's selected. So we need to change it as Python 3.12, okay? So project we created with the name and the app also students, the same thing we are going to create, everything as it is what we ha I have shown in the previous starting, at the starting. Okay, just click on the terminal. Just click on the terminal. So it will take little time. Yeah. So it is in the sleeping mode. Just I'm clicking on the terminal. Opens like this. Now see here. So any of the module, if you click on any of the module, it opens like this. So uh, yeah, views. Views is the place where we are going to write the coding part. Okay. As I said earlier, this is the Django project. Uh, so I will show you that MVT. MVT diagram. Okay. So Django in this. So this is the MVT diagram. MVT stands for model view template. So model is the backend. Views is the business logic where we'll be writing the code, where we'll be writing the source code of the project in the views module. Views is the module. Module is nothing but which ends with the .py extension is called the module. So in the views.py, so we are going to write the source code of the entire project. Model is the Backend tables we are going to create and templates is the in the templates we are going to create the front end all HTML files. Okay, so this is the Django server as I said the Python space manage.py module we are going to run a server run server is the command isn't it we use that Python space manage.py space run server Django server we are going to run then it will come like this. Okay, so this is the MVT diagram based control flow we are going to do this particular project okay so that is the diagram okay front end we are going to use all these tools django 4 we installed already in our laptop okay django using django only we created a project html5 css3 bootstrap 5 and boots watch theme these are the things we are going to use one by one okay so we installed all these softwares and we know all these things front end html files css all those things it will be coming here CSS, Bootstrap. Okay, so what else? So we can see here CSS3, Bootstrap, or Bootswatch. Okay, is the theme we are going to use. Okay, HTML file, CSS, Bootstrap. 
would watch we are going to use on the front end business logic is the source code of the entire particular project okay so back end is database connectivity we are going to use this db sqlite 3 okay in this particular project okay so right so now we are going to run this so it will take time to update all these things uh, so we are not going to use this particular interpreter just click on the four four lines in the file go to the settings there you will find the project in the settings okay project student management system select the python interpreter so from the drop down menu python interpreter show all will show all the interpreters in the laptop or just click on plus button so it is not showing so we need to add from the system interpreter just click on system interpreter there you can find the drop down 3.12 3.12 you need to select that particular interpreter and click on okay so a virtual environment will be created all the paths will be created click on okay so now you can see the 3.12 version so whatever packages are present inside you can able to see here click on apply so you can install the django from here plus uh, from django also we need to install this it is not present inside django we need to install in the pycharm you can just click on install button otherwise you can do it from here so you can do it in two different ways so just to type the plus button so django so it will show all the things okay it is not updated so now the uh, all the things are updating it is take it is taking little time four things are pending okay so that is the reason we need to finish all these things then only it will come so yeah so here we need to install that django pip install django if i don't mention equal to equal to latest version it will install the django so no problem you can just click on enter so ps stands for python shell okay so it will use the powershell in the windows which is powershell in our windows compulsory we need to have the powershell to open the terminal powershell windows powershell it will use ps stands for python shell in this case ps you can able to see at the uh, at the beginning okay so don't worry uh, so we are going to continue this videos okay so this may be the part one so part two part three we are going to see why because complete project explanation i'm going to do from the scratch you can do it yourself without anybody's help so just follow the steps you can able to do everything by yourself if you are having any doubts you can contact me So it will take little time. Why? Because just now we installed the PyCharm, isn't it? Already existing. So Django is already existing. It is showing in the Python 3.8. No problem. So the same project we are going to create from the scratch. Okay, what we have done, uh, what I showed in before at the starting, starting point, you can see the same project I'm going to share. I'm going to create from the scratch, okay? So front end, we are going to use all these things. Okay, you can see here. HTML files. So for supporting HTML files, CSS3, Bootstrap, Bootswatch, we are going to use JavaScript also, we are going to use. Okay, so much, of, so much lengthy it is. Video is so much lengthy. Why? Because complete project we are going to create from scratch. Okay.
So I'm going to run the project from here, from the PyCharm. So already we done it from the command prompt, okay? So now I'm going to run the project from here. Students is the app name, okay? In that app, we are going to create the app contains the uh, front end, back end, and business logic, not the project. Project doesn't contain. Project contains so many apps, okay? So project contains so many apps. So this is the thing. If I click on this particular link, it opens in the default browser. So what is my default browser? It opens in that particular thing. Okay. So now the browser is also working. You can see here. So here we are going to create the student management system front end part and crude operations on this student management system. We are going to see now. Okay. But not possible in this video. So part two, I'm going to make. Okay. Why? Because it will take a lot of time. So for in the part two uh, video, I'm going to show you how to create the HTML. Okay. So how to import the CSS, all those things from scratch, I'm going to show you. And uh, I'm going to create the models in the model tables, table. Okay. Table, as I said, so these are the tables we are having, isn't it? First, I showed you the table. So first name, last name, uh, yeah, student roll number, first name, last name, and uh, email ID, GPA. All these things, it will be coming in the table. We are going to create a table. Okay. So it, it will take much time. So from the second part of this video, we are going to continue all those things. Okay. So maximum in the second part, we'll be finishing everything. All the coding part. So we can see at the, at the bottom, uh, Python 3.12. It is working, okay? So we, we just selected that particular interpreter for this project. Just click on file, settings. You can able to see the settings. In the settings, we are can able to see the Python 12, okay? So in that Django, we are going to install. So see here, virtual environment is created. Just after finishing all this task, I'm going to end up this video. Why? Because so uh, in the second part, uh, so we will start the coding, front end coding, uh, HTML part coding, uh, bootstrap, all those things we are going to include in that. Okay. Okay. You can see here student management system. Got that virtual environment. Click on apply and okay. So we are going to use this particular interpreter student management system in that particularly we installed in right now, isn't it? So after finishing this, I will close this. So in the next part, we are going to create the tables, front end and business logic, all the three things. Okay. As I mentioned here, so in this diagram. So model is the tables, database tables. We are going to create a model. Templates is the front end. Okay. So this is the front end. All the HTML files will be there in here. HTML files and views are business logic is nothing but the source code of this particular project. Okay. We are going to create for each and every app will be containing this, all the three things, views, model, and template, not the project. So until here, the project blue color is the project from there. It will, it will be go to the 
uh, individual apps. So if I'm having just like uh, Sikandabad Junction or Vijayawada Junction, from their junction, it will be moving to all the directions, isn't it? Different districts, different places, it will be moving. Like that, from URL, it goes to the all the different apps. If I'm having 10 different apps, it goes to the 10 different apps, okay? I'm going to close this. So you can see here, so it is going to update the indices, okay? So I'm going to stop here, okay? After finishing this background task, I'm going to stop here. Why? Because we are ready with the softwares. So just we need to develop the project, okay? Project creation is finished. Project creation is finished. But we need to develop the project, okay? So for development, we need to we need to have an idea what to do. So already we got an idea. So already done project, I'm going to do it from the scratch, okay? I did that. So I'm going to show you that complete project from the scratch, okay? Software, sir. So by seeing this part, part one, you need to uh, just install all the softwares, get ready with the softwares, okay? So you need to open the PyCharm. In the PyCharm, you need to open like this. You need to get like this, okay? If you click on this particular link, you need to open this, your default browser. So whatever may be your default browser, it opens in that particular software. So until here, you need to do. Next part of the uh, this video, we are going to continue and do all the project work, okay? I'm going to show you that. So I'm going to close this video. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, just follow the second part of this video. So the continuous uh, of this uh, continuation of this project. Okay, so you will get an idea. So if you do one project uh, by seeing the video, if you can able to follow the project by all these steps, and you you can able to do all the. Uh, project by seeing this video you can do n number of projects so many projects you can do by yourself so instead of student management system you can take employee management system you can take any kind of thing whatever task will be asked by the client also you can do you can do even freelancing projects also okay freelancing projects you can get from here you can able to see here i'm going to help you with this so from the 5r just go and click on 5r you can able to see the Python full stack are Django projects here. So people are earning lakhs of rupees from this. So this is the 100% genuine website you can find here. Okay. So payment is very genuine. It is taking time. Okay. Right. I'm going to show you the 5R. So I'm going to close the even this also. Everything is closed. So if you can do one or two projects by yourself, next project I am planning with the MySQL database, okay? So that is the thing, real-time projects, they will be using MySQL database, not DBSQL3. So DBSQL3, why we are using is, it is a default database for Django framework. So that is the reason we are doing. So it won't work actually. So real-time project, it is not that secure. So MySQL is more secure and it can handle crores of lakhs of records. Right. It is taking much time. Okay.
So I'm going to continue this video. Okay. After finishing this, I will upload in the YouTube. And I'm going to continue this video. Why? Because just we created a project and uploaded in the Python pro community version. Now we need to develop this project. The concept also we know. Student management system. Okay. I'll show you the project. Original project, I have done this SMS. And this is the project we have we did right now. Okay. In this Django project is the name of the folder. In this virtual demo, is the virtual demo we have created. In this student management system, this is the project name. In that, we are having the app. If I double click on this, you can see the app. Students is the app. So that uh, any number of any number of apps we can create. So now we are going to create an app with the students. Student is the table name. So next part, in the next part, I'm going to show you the how to create a table, how to connect with the backend and business logic we are going to see, okay? So this is the student management system. Right click on this, open with the uh, show more options. If Windows 10 directly, it will come here. Otherwise in Windows 11, show more options. You need to click on that. And it will show the Python, uh, PyCharm community version. You need to open in this way. Okay, just I'm going to close this just for awareness for, for you. I'm going to open that. Yeah, it is going, it is getting very late to open this particular Chrome browser. Okay, anyway, I'm going to stop here to close here the session. Next video, I'm going to show you the next of uh, uh, proceeding of this particular video. Okay, so in the next video, we are going to create a table. In the table, all the fields we are going to create and database also I will show you. So DBS Cloud 3 is the database we can see here. Okay, right click on the database. Right click on the database, copy path reference. Okay, and open the database at the task. I'm going to open on my taskbar. I'm I just click on the database. You can see here on my taskbar, DB browser is at three. Click on that, it will open. So it is taking much time. Yeah, it is taking much time. I'm going to close this session. Okay. Anyway, in the next video, I'm going to show you what is 5R and what is the use of that. Okay. Why? Because I'm not able to get this. So I'm going to close this particular session. Thank you very much for joining. Okay. I'm going to close this. Thank you. Thank you very much for joining this particular session. Next video, I'm going to show you how to do the next part. Front end business logic. That is the entire source code of the project as well as uh, database connectivity tables also. I'm going to show you, okay? Thank you very much. Take care.